What do you see as the top opportunities for maritime companies in Saudi Arabia? We need to break it down to the sectors within the maritime industry. So let's look at the oil and gas sector. So on the oil and gas sector, Aramco's demand is increasing for vessels. I think over the next five years, it will increase significantly, which means there's huge opportunities for them on there, for local companies, local maritime shipping companies, to increase the volume of their ships and to grow their business. So that's on the oil and gas sector. If you look on the port sector, you know, there's huge opportunities there because the port sector has recently released tenders for port management uh, and port support services. So again, that's a growth area and opportunities. Finally, I would say on the commercial shipping sector, uh, okay, the traditional shipping company here is Bahari. That's the national shipping company. However, you've got the international operators who've set up here. So there's opportunities for them. Trade volumes are increasing. So the trade is increasing. Exports are increasing other than non-oil. So there's opportunities for them to expand into the kingdom and grow their business. The kingdom presents a lot of business opportunities. From a legal standpoint, what do companies need to be aware of in doing business in Saudi? Well, I think firstly, uh, foreign investors, they firstly need to check where what are the investment rules and regulations here? Can they set up by themselves? Do they need a local partner? If they need a local partner, what's the percentage that is minimum required? So you've got that ex uh, sector. Uh, then you obviously, on the wider perspective, is looking at the, the legal regime at the moment, governing the contracts, etc. One of the things which they need to look at immediately is a couple of months back, the first civil transaction law of Saudi Arabia was approved. It comes into effect in December. So that will have a huge impact on the contracts that they enter into. So they need to engage someone who's familiar with that law because going forward, that will have a huge impact on the way you do business in Saudi Arabia, at least from a cert certainty legal point of view or understanding what your exposure and risk is. What advice would you offer to a company looking to set up in Saudi Arabia? You have one or two choices. You can set up by yourself. Some companies who, are, who already operate in the region or who have some exposure in Saudi Arabia may prefer to do that. It depends on the sector that they're getting into. But if you're a fresh entrant into the market, uh, it's important for you to understand the culture, the, the way of doing business here. And for that, you may want to go with a partner. But then again, which partner do you choose? The key question is choose a partner which is knows the industry that you're getting into, just not any random partners just because you want, because I think that becomes a key for them, for the companies to invest. Because a local partner, if, if they are specialists in the industry and they know the rules and regulations, they can help the international investor guide them, guide them through it, set up properly and give them the relevant support as well. Just not having a local partner for the sake of having a local partner because they need to meet a minimum percentage of a shareholding because the foreign investment law says you need X amount from a, from a, like a Saudi, Saudi partner. What value would that partner add other than just the requirement of 25% Saudi shareholding or 30% or 50%? But what, add, what is their added value to your business and to your sector? What impact had 2019 Saudi's maritime law had on the industry? The law has still not been fully tested before the courts. It's still going through the phase of where it still is being tested. However, what the impact it has had, it has given confidence to companies to come here and invest. Because before that law came into effect, uh, the law that was in place was just not fit for modern day shipping or maritime sector. It, foreign investors were always were cautious because they said, we don't understand the risk we're getting into. But at least the maritime law has given them that framework where they, have, they understand the risk. They know what they're getting into, <clears throat> what their exposure is, which helps them to make an informed business decision, which in turn, I think, is helping the investors to come in and grow the business here and the economy. Historically, foreign companies have been very reluctant to go before the Saudi courts. And that's still the case. You know, I still get asked the question from some foreign client whose first time 
litigating in Saudi Arabia, oh, I'm litigating against a Saudi company, does that mean I'm going to lose the case full stop? No, no, you're not. There is a justice system. You will go through it. And you go. so I think it's the confidence uh, there are certain aspects which have been tested and the results we're seeing are more uh, in line with what it takes place in the rest of the region. And I think the other factor is, is like the, one of the other questions I get asked quite often is, uh, we've got this issue or claim with a government entity. Uh, are we on a losing streak if we go against them? I said, no, you're not. You, you know, there is a justice system in place and it doesn't matter if you're pursuing a government entity. I think one of my you know, biggest cases that I've had was winning an appeal against the customs uh, authorities here, where we went all the way through the court system and we ended up with the royal court, got an order from the king, his highness, his royal highness the king, ask, directing the custom authority to return the confiscated cargo because they had confiscated it incorrectly or wrongly or unlawfully. So yes, you know, I think the concept is I don't think so people need to be afraid of the legal system or be hesitant of it. Yes, it is very different to what they used to in the Western world, but there is a due process. There is a thing. Judges don't always get it right, but which country the judges always get it right in?